And you have seen a good day continuing from commodities. We started, uh, we started Asia on a positive note and that's how Europe has taken over. We also have seen gold prices continue to be on the higher side. And there has been a rebound in the base metal prices and the crude as well. Nearly 1% to 2% on the higher side is how most of those base metal prices are trading right now. There's a news flashing on your screen from the agencies. The Sun Pharma gets tentative. US FDA not for cancer drug Temodor. Temodar is the news coming in on your screens. Let's also get the stock on the screens to, get a to see the reaction that it may have been because of that. Well, the news coming in from agencies at this point in time, of course, that there has been uh, USFDA not coming in for their cancer drug. Half a percent of again on your screens right now. Of course, the news still trickling in and there is some confirmation yet to come into that space there. Let's get in though back to commodities then and get in our guest Ashok Mittal, CEO Commodities and Currencies, MK Comtrade, now joins us live on the show. Ashok, hi, welcome. Let's start with the space where we have seen sharpest of declines and a bit of a rebound now coming in for the last one session and that really has been the base metal prices. Copper, how do you see the Elcoa earnings have been positive? There are those concerns about Chile strike also trickling into the market. But do you think it's a good level to start buying in? Uh, hi, Mish. I think in base metal, uh, there are two things which happened. Uh, one is the Chinese data which we saw that looks like a little positive and people are expecting some more monetary easing happening which will support the base metal prices, especially the copper prices. The, the supply side constraint in Chile and all will also keep some kind of a firmness going ahead. And also today when we saw the German data, French data which in, in terms of trade balance and the PMI data which came yesterday, that suggests that there is some kind of you no know, expositive uh, things are happening where we see some recovery happening. So I think overall, uh, technically also we are at a support level. So we do expect that these are good levels to, to enter into uh, long positions for base metals. Uh, overall, especially in copper, uh, I think it's, uh, we think that there is another say about say 10, 12 rupees upside possible in copper prices. So while overall base metal pack looks good within that copper, we are recommending to buy on this. Sure. Ashok, what's your sense coming in for the crude prices now? Because after 4.7% decline in the previous week, yesterday and today have been slightly better days. But would you just call it some opportunity buying? Because the U.S. inventory data is yet to come and markets are expecting that to be bearish yet again. How would you read into the numbers? We have seen that whenever data has come, then we, there is some uh, knee-jerk movement happening on the upside or downside, but which increase the volatility. But I think the price trend broadly has been within, say, 90 to 98 dollars in the last few sessions. So we do expect that we are closer to say support levels at 92 dollars or so. So we do expect that the positive environment which is building around a recovery in US economy and the way Japan is now you know, taking a lot of steps in terms of improvement of their recovery and we do expect a lot of demand coming from Japan side as well as uh, on, on the other side we see the geopolitical issues which are hurting or which may hurt the, the supply side. Hence, there is a premium being built up in the, in the uh, crude oil prices. So we do expect that we should see somewhere about 96, 97 dollars in the coming session. So in fact, we, we do recommend that buy on the current levels or buy on dips. On Indian market also, I think uh, if, if the price is going say about 2 to 1.5 dollars upside, that means we have an upside of about uh, say 100 rupees plus. So buying maybe maybe when you are half a dollar half a dollar lower from the current level should be a good idea, and then you have a very good risk reward ratio where your stop loss will be just about say half a dollar or say 50 rupees, and then you you can gain about 100 rupees and plus. Sure, Ashok. While you are buying into the industrial commodities, energy and base metals as well, would you have a ditto stance coming in for the precious metals also, especially gold, where we have seen a rebound coming in since Friday after those weak U.S. jobs data numbers? Yeah. But are you looking at this strength sustaining? Uh, our idea is that in the last uh, so many months, we are, while we have been bullish and uh, thinking that continuous uh, upside will continue despite of some downside pressure coming in the precious metals, gold and silver. But I think now for the last next few days or maybe months, we expect that upside may not continue because it has not been able to hold on the uh, strong support level. So I think now if we look at $1,600 in the international market is a resistance and we can expect gold going back to around say $1,550 or $1,520. Similarly, silver also the range should be now $26 to $28. So say close to $28 we are looking to sell. The basic reason is that there is, a, there is a improvement in sentiment where we are expecting that uh, uh, if U.S. recovery happens and U.S. dollar as a currency strengthens, that will definitely have a lot of pressure on, on precious metals, which has been happening in the last say, few sessions. 
Now, in between when the, we see the data, say jobless and all, then obviously there is a, some uh, event-based, uh, say, price movement which thinks that there is a recovery. Also, when, when you are continuously going short, then some kind of buying also uh, comes on the, on the lower levels and hence the prices are higher. But I, uh, we will believe that uh, overall this will be an opportunity to go short and we're recommending to sell on the, on the upticks for gold and silver both. If you see CFTC data there also, the traders or hedgers, they have actually now built up positions on the short side, whether in the futures or the options. And normally they are say, very strong and they are right in terms of how the market moves. So and those positions will be competitively for a little longer uh, term perspective. So I think uh, people should move their positions whenever they, these updates which are coming now uh, for to, going, uh, to go short and we do expect some uh, downside in both gold and silver prices. Sure. Ashok, while you have mentioned the international market levels there, what about the Indian prices? Because how would, what kind of support are you expecting in the Indian markets here? Do you see 50,000 reaching in the silver prices and do you see 29,000 reaching in case of gold as well? Uh, oh yeah, I think uh, if not immediately, we will definitely see uh, 29,000 or sub-29,000 in gold prices and maybe close to say 50,000 rupees in silver prices. I'm only looking at the, when we look at Indian rupee prices at 49,500 because if you remember last time when it fell from say 74,000 it came to 49,500 in terms of rupee and then from here it has bounced. So I will assume that it will take some kind of support around 49,500 plus minus maybe 200, 300 rupees. So if anybody is looking to really buy, he should buy between that level, 49,000 to 50,000 for a investment perspective. But uh, I think we will definitely see 50,000 or uh, sub 50,000 level. Fair point, Ashok. What's your sense coming in for some of these agro commodities, especially the edible oil space and especially mustard oil into that one because there have been those crop news that has been trickling in. How are you reading all of that? See, what has happened in the last uh, uh, few sessions, if you see in the spot market, the soya bean, soya oil prices has been quite high. Soya bean has moved a lot. So within that oil seed space, we think there is a lot of opportunity for mustard seed prices going up because in the spot market, demand is quite high. There is a demand from uh, Southeast Asian countries. Uh, the farmers are holding back their stocks because they expect the way soya bean or soya meal price is higher. So obviously, uh, uh, mustard seed prices should be actually higher. So the arrival has actually uh, come down a uh, little bit. So we do expect, although the prices has gone up almost 150 to 200 rupees in the last few sessions, we do expect that mustard seed still has a scope of not going up. So we are recommending to buy uh, 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 rape seed at the current levels or on dips. And then we, so when you buy, you keep about 50, 60 rupees stop loss, but your upside is almost 150 to 200 rupees. So while oil, oil and oil seed sector has otherwise moved up, I think there is scope on, on mustard seed prices going up. So buying on dips is a strategy for that.